In this video, I'll be showing you three easy methods to produce a running, jumping, and idle animation. I'll then introduce you to shape keys where we'll animate Crash's eyes, and we'll finish off by going over the anim graph, all in just 15 minutes. Have you ever wanted to create a game before? What if I told you, you could be creating content like this in a month? Hi, my name's John and Beard Games is my YouTube channel. I'm currently in production of a 30 day tutorial series where I aim to fast track you through the essentials of Unreal Engine. So you can go from where you are now to creating your first game in just 30 days. If that doesn't appeal to you, when I finish the series, I'll be taking tutorial requests and working on a multiplayer and mobile game tutorial series. It'd be so awesome if you joined us and together we'll create some kick-ass games. What's up guys, welcome to episode 13, part two. We got the mic, thank you for being so patient and now I can start releasing some content. This video is a direct sequel to my rigging tutorial. So if you don't have a rig with inverse kinematics implemented, please check out my rigging episode and get the inverse kinematics sorted. So the few days while I was waiting for my mic, I was thinking about how I could take my channel to the next level. And I was really trying to think about what you guys wanted from my videos. And I think the majority of you just want to learn stuff really, really fast without the bullshit. <coughs> just straight to the point information. So I've been working to refine my videos even more and this video I'm going to be going step by step by step really fast and I hope it is a good way of learning for you guys. Let me know in the comments but hope you enjoy. Begin by opening a new panel and to do this if you move your mouse to the top right corner till you see a hit marker, if you click and drag to the left you will open a new screen. To close the screen you just click and drag to the right but with your new screen selected, go into the top left and bring up the dope sheet. This is where we'll keep track of all the animations. Middle mouse click to move around, middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out, and click and hold the blue timeline marker to change the time. We're gonna begin by creating a running animation. So insert a reference photo where your character is mid leap. You can do this by pulling the picture in from your file explorer. Link in the description for anyone wanting the one that I'm using. Line up the photo with your character by rotating it and moving it with G and R. When your photo's in position, begin moving your character into a pose similar to that of the reference photo. But let me break this down. Begin by moving your character upwards. Use the spine or pelvis bone for this. Move your legs into position via the foot control bone. If your leg is facing the incorrect way, make sure your knee control bone is in front of the leg, not behind it. For the fingers, move your hands into a position where the fingers line up along the Y axis. This means they can easily be curled into position using the X axis. Then adjust them with the Z and Y axis. Do this until the hand is in a fist shape. Lean your character forward using the spine and lift the head up slightly. For a very exaggerated run, tilt your character to the side, away from the front hand. If you ever want to reset a bone to its original position, you can use Alt plus R to reset its rotation and Alt plus G to reset its position. Move your hands into position using the hand control bone. Make sure your elbow control bone is facing outwards via the elbow. When you're happy with your initial pose, make sure you're at zero on the timeline, select all the bones via the A key, then press I and click location, rotation and scale. You've now just made your very first keyframe. Each of these dots represents a location, rotation and scale for their corresponding bone. To create an animation, all you have to do is create another pose at a different time and your character will move from pose A to pose B over time. But watch out, now you've created your first pose. If you move your character into a different pose without inserting a keyframe, if you then move your timeline, your character will snap back into the pose you created previously. In the bottom left, set your timeline length to 20. This means the animation will be 20 frames long. Alt click on one of your keyframes to select every keyframe in that line. Control C, move to 20, Control V to paste the copy of that at time 20. Certain animations like running consist of a loop which is played over and over. This means the first keyframes have to be the same as the last keyframes. The orange line between them means they are exactly the same and there's no animation happening. Go to the halfway point in your animation and press Shift Control V. This will paste the copy of the keyframes, however it will invert them. So everything from the left side of the body will be flipped over to the right and everything on the right side of the body will be flipped over to the left. Hide your reference photo using H. Go to the 25% mark and move the feet control bones down to the ground. Then move your spine down until your character is stood on the floor. 
Rotate your feet so they are flat on the ground and facing straight forward. Move them further apart if they are too close together. Reset the position of each spine bone with Alt R, then lean the spine forward a small amount. Move your hand control bones so the hands are by the character's side. Make sure the arms aren't locked out, have them bent slightly. Select all the bones with A, then press I and click Location, Rotation and Scale. Alt click the keyframes to select the line, Control C to copy, go to the 75% mark and then press Shift Control V to invert paste the keyframes. Go to side view, just before the 25% mark, move your foot bone up slightly so it's not going into the ground. Then press I to set its location, rotation and scale. Copy this keyframe with Control C. Go to just before the 75% mark and Shift Control V to invert paste this keyframe. Go to side view again and just after the 25% mark, move your foot control bone down and adjust the foot bone so the foot is resting on the floor. Then select the foot bone and the foot control bone and press I to set its location, rotation and scale. Alt click the animation, Control C to copy, then just after your 75% mark, Shift Control V to invert paste the animation. Change your animation length to whatever your length is, minus one. As the start keyframes are the same as the end, we set the timeline length to cut off the end keyframe so the animation loops without pausing for a frame. And we're done. What I've shown you is just the basic steps to getting the running animation done, but don't forget to tweak it to perfection. Now we've created our first animation, we can create a new animation for the same character by going into the action editor. Create a new action by pressing the button with the two files on it, click on the name area and call it jump start. Reset the pose by selecting all the bones with A, then Control R, Control G, then I to set location, rotation and scale, then delete the other keyframes. Don't do this, but now you can flick through your animations by clicking the drop down and selecting which animation you want. Okay, creating a jump animation actually has three steps, the jump, the falling and the landing. It's done like this because we never know how long a character might be falling for, meaning we need a falling loop in the middle. First, we're gonna make the jump. Import this lovely reference photo I made for you, scale this up to fit your character, and line up the Y axis with the green line and the Z axis with the blue line. This will be a rough reference. Now match the pose. Lower the spine, put the feet up, bend the spine forward, move the head up, and move the hands back. I'm not gonna be doing the fingers for this animation, so if you wanna do the fingers, you can move the fingers into position now. Select all the bones with A, and then Location, Rotation, Scale, at a time of zero. Move your timeline to three seconds, go back into Object Mode, Control Tab, then move your reference photo over using G. Then line up the axis again. Now onto the second pose, so lift the spine till the feet come off the ground. Move the feet behind the character by moving the feet control bones. Make sure the knee bone is in front of the character, and keep the knees slightly bent. Straighten the spine, move the hands forward, and when you're happy with the pose, select everything with A, and then I to lock, rot, and scale keyframe. Go back into object mode with control tab, move the reference photo until it lines up with the axis of the third pose, set your timeline time to seven, move the spine up, lift the feet up, and for a more realistic jump, have one foot below the other. For a more cartoon jump, spread the feet apart. Bend the neck forward slightly and move the arms up in front of the character. And when you're happy, select all with A and I to location, rotation, scale, keyframe. Go back into object node with control tab and then move the reference photo again to the final pose. Move the timeline time to 13. Move the neck down slightly. Imagine your character jumped off a ledge and put your character's arms in a position where you'd think they would be when he's free falling through the sky. Select all your bones with A and then I to lock, rot, and scale keyframe. Then set your total timeline length to 13. So jump start is done now. Now time for the jump loop. So create a new action, call this jump mid, then select all your keyframes except for frame 13, either by alt clicking or C selecting, then press X to delete. Then move all the keyframes at frame 13 to zero by alt clicking them and pressing G to move them. Copy all the frames at frame zero by alt clicking them, then pressing Control C, and Control V them at the 20 frame mark. 
Our aim over these 20 frames is to move our hands and feet in a tiny circle motion so it looks like our character is treading air. Move to frame 5, then select your feet control bones and your two hand control bones. Move these bones a fraction to the left and a tiny bit upwards. Less movement is better. Making sure all four bones are selected, press I to location rotation scale keyframe. Control C and Control V these frames over to time 10, then move your timeline over to time 10. Select your feet and hand control bones again and then move them down and left a fraction. Press I to set a keyframe in lock, rot and scale. Control C, Control V these frames over to time 15, then move your time over to 15. Select your feet and hand control bones again, then move them down and right a fraction. Press I to lock, rot, scale, keyframe. Now go to the halfway point and move your spine up slightly and press I to lock, rot, scale, keyframe. Then move your neck down slightly and press I to lock, rot, scale, keyframe. Tweak your animation until you're happy with it and it looks like your character is falling through the sky. Then set your timeline length to 19. Now we're done with the loop, we can finally work on the end. So create a new action and call this jump end. Alt click and delete all the keyframes except for the ones at frame zero. Move your reference photo to pose two. We skip the first pose because we already have our start pose. Then move your timeline to frame two. Move the spine down. Select your feet control bones, reset their position with control R, control G then position them so the feet look natural. Move the hand controller bones down to the side and pull the hands closer together. Rotate the spine slightly forwards, select all the bones with A and then press I to lock rot scale. Move your timeline to frame 3, move the reference photo over to, to pose 3, rotate the spine in the neck so he's leaning further forwards, pull the spine down slightly, Select both hand controller bones and pull them down slightly. Select all the bones with A and press I to lock, rot, scale, keyframe. Move your timeline to frame 5 and move the reference photo to the final pose. Select the bone you've been using to raise and lower the character and reset rotation and location with Control R and Control G. Reset the position of your feet bones with Control R, Control G, then rotate them so they look natural again. Reset the position and rotation of your spine with Control R, Control G. Select your hand controller bones and move them so the hands are almost in line with the body. Then select all your bones with A and press I to lock, rot, scale, keyframe. Then set your timeline length to five frames. If you follow the steps correctly, you should now have three animations, a jump start, a jump mid loop, and a jump end. Although they may not look like much, when combined in your software, they will be perfect. We're almost there guys, keep up the good work. And now it's time for the idle animation. So create a new action, call it idle anim. Reset all your bones position, so press A, then control R, control G. Then press I to set a new keyframe on lock rot scale. Now delete all your old keyframes by selecting them by alt clicking, then pressing X to delete. Put your character into a resting pose. The easiest way to do this is to put on the x-axis mirror, then move one of the hand controller bones by its side. This will then reflect onto the opposite side. Set your timeline length to 89. Then duplicate your starting animation and put it to frame 89. We do this because we're making a loop animation. Go to your halfway mark and then select the spine and the hand controller. Move them down slightly. Then select the feet bones and tilt them so they're flat on the ground. Then select your spine bone and rotate it forward. Then select the spine bone higher up and rotate it backwards. This will make the character look like he's breathing. The more extreme you tilt the spine bones, the heavier the breathing looks. And that's it done. This is just the simplest form of idle animation. I wanted to keep it basic for you guys, but feel free to do some crazy idle animations where they're looking around or throwing things, etc. Okay, now onto shape keys. Shape keys are used to tweak your mesh when a bone just isn't doing the job well enough. You can use shape keys to correct parts of your mesh during animation or for things such as facial expressions. Exit pose mode with control tab, select your object and take a look at the object data properties tab. Under shape keys, click the plus icon to create a base shape key. This is your default look for your mesh without changes. Now click the plus again, double click this and call this look up. To change the position of a shape key, all you have to do is have the shape key selected in the menu and then edit your mesh in edit mode. 
With the lookup shape key selected, go into edit mode and select both of Crash's eyes with L and move them upwards. Exit edit mode and you'll notice that when we change the value of lookup, our mesh's eyes will change. If the value of a shape key is 1, the mesh will be completely changed into that shape key. If the value is 0, the mesh will look the same as the base key. Now we've made the shape key, now we need to animate it. So change your mode to dope sheet as this is where we can keyframe shape keys. Move your timeline to zero and with your mouse hovering the value bar, press I to keyframe the value at zero. Then move to frame 45 and change the value to one. Press I to keyframe it again. Then go to frame 90 and keyframe the value at zero. So what we've done is increase the value to one over time, then reduce it back to zero, making our character look up then down. Congratulations, you've just created your very first shape key animation. Okay, so maybe it's a bit terrible, but this is just to introduce you to them. Now you can go wild and tweak your animations with your own shape key. You'll notice when you apply a shape key, it will apply for all animations. At current, I do not know how to make them specific to each animation without using drivers, which I'm not going into this episode. What I recommend is that you create an animation with shape keys, then export it, then delete the keyframes for the shape keys, when exporting the other animations. Okay, so the last thing I wanna go over is the graph editor. You will notice when an animation transitions from one keyframe to another, it has a fade in effect. So if you take a look at this cube going back and forth, you will notice that it slows down before it reaches each keyframe. We can change this transition in the graph editor. So if you create another window and in the top left, select graph editor. Each colored line represents a transform of the cube. If you click the drop down on the left, you can see which line represents which transform. Each of the black dots represent a keyframe. As you can see, the X axis line is in a curve shape. This is the transition, where it's slowing down before it starts heading back. We can change the way it does this by first moving the points either side of the keyframe. or we can change the way the keyframes transition by pressing T. This brings up the interpolation menu. So have a play around with the different settings. I'll write a brief description of the three main methods on screen now. I wouldn't worry about the graph editor too much, but it's something you should know exists. And if you want to change the way your animation moves from one keyframe to another, this is the place to change it. Okay guys, that is it for this episode. I hope you learned loads and I really hope you're excited for the next few episodes. I'm going to be teaching you how to put your characters into Unreal with the default mannequin animations. I'm going to be putting our characters into Unreal with our animations. We've got loads of cool stuff coming up. Thank you for being so patient with me in terms of uploads. I'm doing my best and obviously the mic took a while. But thank you guys for watching. See you next time.